Facebookbits.com presents Smart Couples Finish Rich by David Batch. In Smart Couples Finish Rich, David Batch offers couples a step-by-step guide to building and maintaining financial wealth that has been tailored to fit our current economy, but will last for years to come. Instead of avoiding each other when it comes to time to balance the checkbook, you and your partner will learn how to come together and identify your core values and dreams, creating a spending and saving plan that reflects your values as a couple. Packed with easy-to-use tools that will take you from credit card management to long-term care, each chapter will guide you and your partner as a team toward a more rewarding financial plan based on the same overall financial objectives. The Smart Couples Finish Rich 9-Step Journey provides every couple with strategies for organization, communication, and smarter spending that you can put into action immediately. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Smart Couples Finish Rich. Step 1. Learn the facts and myths about couples and money. This chapter mostly focuses on debunking some pretty basic myths about money, such as the idea that love conquers money, money has nothing to do with love, and that it takes money to make money. Compound interest can make big money for you. Mostly, it sets a psychological foundation for communicating about money within a relationship, enabling you to be able to talk about later topics while being on the roughly the same page. The exercise for this chapter is a basic financial knowledge quiz that both members of a relationship can take and talk over. The questions mostly relate to personal financial numbers, such as a couple's current net worth and where their assets are. It gives a good indication of who possesses the financial knowledge in a relationship and what areas each person may be weak or strong in, and thus the two members can talk about the things and make sure they're both in the know or have the opportunity to be. Step two, determine the true purpose of money in your life. The focus of this chapter is squarely on figuring out your basic values. The chapter is dominated by an example of a couple digging through their personal belief structures to isolate what their core values are, a process that works wonderfully if you learn by example. An important distinction is made between goals and values here. Goals are merely the expression of values, and as values are interconnected, so should goals be. The exercise for this chapter revolves around listing the five central values in your life. The author encourages a relaxing situation before beginning to piece together your central values. And he also provides a lot of help in the process. Why would you want to do this? Once you've figured out your true values, you can use them as the basis for the rest of your life. Step three, plan together, win together. This step revolves around the development of a planning system that couples can share in, from a carefully designed record-keeping system to an assessment of long-term goals. I felt that the suggestions in this chapter were pretty specific, given how they're supposed to be based on individual values, which can vary a lot. But they definitely do focus on the relationship between the two people and their relationship to money. Key activities in this chapter include the development and implementation of a system to keep and maintain financial records, and these records, the development of a plan that reflects the values you tested out in the second step. Batch provides a ready steady hand in guiding these activities, which is reassuring for some, but it was a little too much for me. Step four, the couple's latte factor. This chapter focuses on everyday small purchases are what is keeping us from being rich. Batch uses another case study here to demonstrate the frivolous, but also somehow completely socially acceptable. Daily spending of a family, lattes and bagels in the morning, takeout for lunch and dinner, video rentals and late fees, and so on. It really adds up. And Batch argued that if one could just strip $10 a day out of this, one could really prepare for retirement. The exercise for this chapter is to use a notebook and for a single week, record everything that you spend. At the end of the week, sit down with your spouse and review the notebook. It's often shocking how much fat one can trim if you've never done this before. And sometimes, even if you think you're doing really well at it, the simple fact is that all of us can start saving money. If you buy frivolous things, just cut some of them out and suddenly you have money to start saving. Step five, build your retirement basket. Now that you've realized that you can save money, Batch introduces the idea of three baskets that you should put money in. The first of these is the retirement basket. Batch argues vermintly that you should be put in at minimum 10% of our gross salary into a tax-deferred retirement account. He discusses various mechanisms for doing this, including the usual 401k, 403b, and Roth 
IRA options. But mostly the focus is on the fact that you should be saving a healthy amount for retirement in some fashion. Even if the investment options are relatively poor, they're still the best deal around because they're tax deferred, meaning you can put money in without paying income tax, which effectively means you're beating any money you might invest post-tax by about 30%. And many employees offers a match, meaning every dollar you put in, your employer may contribute some too. The action plan here is obvious. See what retirement accounts are available to you and make sure that you're seeing at least 10% contribution into the account. Step six, build your security basket. The second investment basket is a security basket, which is basically a safety net against the unforeseen. Batch recommends a healthy emergency fund for starters in an account that earns at least 4% annually per annum. And following that up with a will slash living trust, good health insurance, a life insurance policy, disability insurance, and eventually a long-term care policy. The action plans here are obvious. Get started with the emergency fund. If you can spare a latte a day and two takeout meals a week, I can get you an emergency fund with almost $4,000 in it by the end of the year. Then investigate other insurances and make sure you're well covered so that if an emergency strikes, your family has no worries. Step seven, build your dream basket. The dream basket is the third place you should put your money. After the retirement basket and the security basket, Batch recommends that you put at least 3% of your annual income towards your dreams, simply so you can see that bright horizon in the future and know you're actually moving towards it. Batch and I agree on one thing. It's a lot easier to live within your means if you see that you're working towards your dreams instead of working for your intimate wants and desires. Step eight, learn to avoid the 10 biggest financial mistakes couples make. Most of these big mistakes are pretty well known, having credit card debt, not having a prenup, and so forth. And relatively unsurprising though, it is a good idea for a couple to review them together just to make sure that they're both on the same page. However, I found the first mistake to be quite interesting. Getting a 30-year mortgage is a big mistake. Here's why. The higher interest rate and longer term of the loan eats so much of your money that it's not worth getting a slightly lower payment each month. This is an interesting issue, one that I'm going to look at very carefully in the near future. And step nine, increase your income by 10% in nine weeks. Final step is the one with the alluring title. Who wouldn't want a 10% increase in their salary in nine weeks? The catch, and there's always a catch with concepts like this, is that the 10% increase comes from requesting a raise from your boss. This section merely provides a week-by-week -week guide building up to the actual raise request, including such items as looking what others in your field are getting paid and so on. I was actually expecting some investment advice here. This is just not the type of investment I was expecting. And that's a wrap on Smart Couples Finish Rich. Subscribe to the channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. If you want to help and be a contributor, get involved in the channel by reading a book, writing a summary, and emailing us at info at bestbookbits.com to have it featured. Thanks for watching and listening, and have yourself an amazing day. Take care.